Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. Um, my name is Richard Betts and I'm joined this week by Paul Strom and Dan Innes. In the week when a number of us anyway went to Cannes in the September sunshine for MIPIM. Dan, what have you been following? Well, I mean, last week was really the first full week of work for many of us. You said you, you were down in Cannes. Um, a lot of us were in, in our office spaces, but one of our first full weeks really after we've had the easing of mask wearing and people getting back to the office space. But deals across the continent are looking to be coming a bit more thicker and faster. The biggest news of last week was that IKEA is understood to have entered into an agreement to buy 214 Oxford Street for £385 million. But you'll know 214 Oxford Street because, of course, it is the former flagship store for Sir Philip Green's Topshop store, you know, one of London's most iconic stores. And it's huge, you know, it's over 10,000 square meters. But of course, it's been closed since Arcadia went into administration in November last year. And of course, ASOS bought all of its brands, including uh, the Topshop brand. Um, and they announced, you know, that they were going to close all of their physical stores. That deal followed an agreement with the US real estate guys at Trammell Crow for Arcadia's former warehouse in Milton Keynes, as well as many other Arcadia assets. And they're, you know, they're all on the market. And that was covered by Retail Gazette. But IKEA has also um, been uh, also understood to be buying the, 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 the unit next door, which is, of course, the corner building onto Oxford Circus, which is currently Nike Town. So Topshop and Nike Town units going to IKEA. That Nike Town unit is 73,000 square feet. Um, there is a small vans unit next door as well, which goes into that bundle. But clearly, they're really establishing a, a great presence in city centres and, and where better than on, on London's Oxford Circus. And remember, you know, Inca Centres bought the King's Mall Shopping Centre in Hammersmith in January 2020. And that was a 170 million investment into their kind of small store format. Um, and Inca Centres, you know, which is IKEA's property arm, you know, they already have a few inner city stores in, in mainland Europe as well, um, notably in Paris and in Moscow. Oxford Street, which has, you know, it's seen good times and bad, but I mean, Oxford Street seems to be bouncing back a little bit there. And actually this week coming on Wednesday, they're launching a new ESG initiative called Beyond Now, which is going to encourage visitors to shop a bit more responsibly. Meanwhile, over to the office sector and um, in an enormous uh, deal, Facebook is looking likely to take the whole of British Land's one Triton Square development at Regent's Place in London. British Land, you know, they celebrated the completion of one Triton Square at the beginning of June this year, and they reached a Briam outstanding level. Interestingly, the articles in EG note that other social media giants in London, such as Snapchat and TikTok, they've also had an expansion to their office uh, presence as well in London, and that Snapchat's close to a deal to lease 114,000 square feet to HB Revis's Bloom building in Farringdon, whilst TikTok apparently has signed a deal to take the whole of Helical's 89,000 square foot kaleidoscope building. So the office market is really beginning to, to hot up. Lastly, I'm hopping over to Germany and Patrizia has sold 180,000 square meter portfolio of 12 retail parks to MIAG for an undisclosed sum. They're the, the asset management team at Munich Re and Ergo. Patricia first acquired those assets in 2005 and 2012, when the strategy then was to invest into food anchored retail locations with a strong catchment. But, um, but supermarkets and food make up nearly half of that portfolio. And Martin Trodden at Patricia, he, he mentioned in, a, in an interview that that German food anchored retail had performed particularly well for them and had deli delivered a sort of sustainable income supported by their active asset management. But it's been particularly resilient during the pandemic, of course. So, um, so yeah, so retail parks still shining quite high on, on in, in the retail market, Richard. Just in terms of that sustainability side, certainly in our interviews at MIPIM, that was coming through very strongly in terms of what people were expecting, both from an investor and an occupier side. It was actually interesting to see CAN when it's not either MAPIC or MIPIM, and when it's actually mainly tourists 
um, and also people who happened to be at the yacht or boat fair that was on at the same time. So very different atmosphere. You could get a table. There were almost no suits at all. My guess is there were maybe 2,000 people there for the real estate fair. But nonetheless, great to get back meeting people and also having those kind of conversations that you can only get when you meet people in person and can just have a chat about what's happening in the market. And although it was limited in terms of the number of people, actually it was still a useful exercise. And I think it would be very positive in terms of um, the strength of fairs like um, Expo Real moving forward and then MIPIM into 2022. I think that was a very encouraging sign for them. Paul, uh, what, what were you tracking over the week? During the week, uh, the results of the uh, European Logistics Census carried out by Savills, Tritax, Eurobox and Analytica were published. It looks at key issues affecting logistics developers, investors and occupiers. And unsurprisingly, lack of supply is the main concern among all property professionals. The findings are based on over 400 detailed responses from companies across Europe. The context was a record annual take-up of 26 million square metres in 2020 and record investment volumes of 39 billion. Uh, Kevin Moffitt, Director Head of Industrial and Logistics Research at uh, Savills, said that uh, this, this year's take-up in 2021 has reached 18.3 million square metres at the halfway mark, which is 60% above the half year average, so there's no sign of, uh, of demand subsiding. Uh, it's a far reaching survey, but a few highlights. The survey showed that uh, sentiment is positive as the uh, increase in take up and investment set to continue. Uh, over 80% of investors and asset managers uh, polled expect increasing take up of, of space this year. Among landowners, 100% view current trading conditions as more favorable than they were six months ago. Two thirds of developers share the op that optimism and 55% of investors. Uh, the percentage declined to 49% among occupiers, retailers were the, the, the most positive of that outlook. Uh, looking at demand by country, over 40% of respondents expect companies uh, to increase uh, warehouse footprint in France, Germany and Spain, uh, Italy and Portugal also in demand. Looking at a similarly booming sector, if somewhat smaller, and its influence on one city, science and research has had a major effect on UK city Cambridge, which has seen sharp increase in office and laboratory uh, market requirements in the last six months. A report from local expert Bidwells showed that office and laboratory demand is at its highest level since 2015, with new requirements constantly coming to the market. Total demand at the end of the first half of this year was 1.7 million square feet. Uh, that was up 30% uh, since the end of 2020 and 45% ahead of levels seen in mid-2020. That may not sound huge, but Cambridge is not a big city and as a barometer of the sector, it's a significant indicator. Uh, and in another sign of the times, uh, Italian fund manager Prelios has agreed the sale of a 1 million square metre site in uh, Turin. That's a whole square kilometre. That's the former Olivetti site in Scarmagno district of Turin. And that's going to uh, electric car battery manufacturer Italvolt, um, where it'll build one of Europe's largest lithium ion battery factories, referred to as a gigafactory. And that'll require a total investment of 3.4 billion. Uh, to build that factory. Demand for lithium-ion batteries in Europe is expected to grow at a rate of 24% a year, uh, led by electric vehicles, and that will exceed 1,200 gigawatt hours by 2035. At present, there's a gap in production of more than 250 gigawatt hours anticipated, so there will be more of this type of factory in the future. Yeah, it's an interesting area that I think, I mean, a lot of those niche areas are certainly very much coming coming to the fore, I think. Um, I also did an interview with Nick Preston, the fund manager at Tritax, around that census. And also one of the interesting things there was that there was less of a focus on um, sustainability um, from the occupier side, uh, but potentially as one might expect, but actually very much from the investor side and an expectation that that would grow quite significantly um, over the next two to five years for certain. Um, I also noticed Cambridge Holdings and Bow Invest 
um, real estate uh, alongside Greystar acquiring a co-living development in Paris, which is the first investment as part of that one billion student housing venture um, that was launched in uh, June 2020. And in fact, Hidika Karata, who's managing director of Greystar in France, said the asset is the first of several deals in our robust pipeline for the Paris venture. So again, interesting to see how that develops. Thank you, Paul. Um, thank you, Dan. Thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the week in real assets. Thank you.